As someone who loves writing his own CSS from scratch, I'll be the first one to tell you that managing styles across an application can be rather hard. That said, when you add JavaScript frameworks on top of that, where they're bringing in components at random times, which means you get unpredictable styles and then you get side effects, it's no wonder why everyone's so frustrated when it comes to managing CSS in these JavaScript frameworks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the power of CSS modules. Here we have a simple button component called primary button. As you can see here, it has a class of button and button primary with button being shortened to BTN. Now, while this looks harmless at first, when it comes to something as common of a class as button, we know that this has a risk of basically polluting the namespace of styles. And so this isn't the best when it comes to bringing in styles across our application. So most of us are probably familiar with scoped styles, which is what a lot of us probably do inside of our view apps. What it does is it adds a data attribute onto our HTML element that is then automatically appended to our styles, which allows us to scope the styles to the component. That said, while this is an effective technique, this has its limitations because as we can probably imagine for those who are familiar with CSS, something with the higher specificity can still override this button class, even though it has a data attribute. It's so, in other words, it's a shallow layer of protection, but really we could do better. Instead of using scope styles, we're going to go ahead and look at CSS modules. How do we use it? Well, all we have to do is similar to scope is we add a module attribute to our style block. Once we do that, we need to do something that's going to feel a little bit odd, especially for those of us who are more familiar with traditional CSS. And that is, we're going to have to refer to our CSS using JavaScript. Now, before you, before you freak out, give me, just give me a chance. So what you'll see here is that we have to vbind our class. And then since we have multiple styles that we're referring to, and in this case, CSS classes, then we actually need to go ahead and pass it an array of the different styles. One thing you'll notice that's different here in particular is this dollar symbol style object that we're referring to. And what this does is this actually encapsulates all the different CSS classes that we've defined inside of our style block. That's why you can see it's referring to the dot button as well as our button primary class. So what happens though, you'll notice is that when Vue goes in to compile it, it's going to go a step beyond what we've seen with scope styles. And what you'll see here is that it does three, it does two particular things. One, it prepends the CSS class and like basically rewrites it by prepending the component that it's related to, as you can see here, a primary button. And then it also appends it with a unique hash. In this case, we see the 22 PMR as well as the 3D MCY. And so then as far as our actual template, you know, when the user actually gets it, it will actually look like this, where the class is this kind of long class name. But as we can see here though, the odds of something actually clashing with the CSS style is basically slim to none. Because you see, you have here the combination of not only the component class, but you also have this unique hash, which basically protects it from other things having higher specificity and then accidentally overriding the styles you intended for within this component. The other thing I really like about this approach that Vue takes when it comes to how to compile the CSS module classes is that it doesn't strip away the original class name you wrote with. One of the things I really appreciate about the way Vue handles CSS modules is that it doesn't override the original class name that you wrote with it. Because after all, when it comes to debugging what happened with styles, it's really important to be able to find where things are coming from. And so if CSS module simply compiles everything to a unique hash, it's really hard to backtrace it. But in this case, you'll notice that not only does it retain the original class name, which is right in the middle there, so you could theoretically Google like BTN, and by Google, I mean search through your VS code. It actually even gives you the component that it comes from directly. So it's one less thing you have to search for because as you can imagine on a large code base, that button is going to be probably in a lot of different components. So it's really nice that we have this developer ergonomic that allows us to easily find the bugs and track it down when it's, when it matters most to us. So now that we've seen the concept demonstrated here, let's go ahead and dive into some code to see how it works in practice. I've gone ahead and brought up our view your to do's app. Where we're going to go ahead and finish styling our components using CSS modules. So in a previous video, we left off here using the tab nav item. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we have to do here. 
Let me go ahead and hide the terminal and sidebar. And so what we see here is that we have our styles, which are using scope CSS, which is nothing wrong with it, but we want to go ahead and convert that over to modules. So the way we're going to do that is let's start by, um, let's start by, so we're going to do, we're going to ignore this piece right now, uh, because this is a more complex piece, which we'll get to in a little bit as far as determining the is active state. And so let's go ahead and then, um, what we need to do now is convert our scope style to the modules. And all we need to do is swap out the attribute and you'll notice that everything breaks. Now, this makes sense given that with scope styles, it was doing the data attribute, which I can show you right here. So we investigate this LI piece and then I switch this back over to scoped. You'll see now that there's that data attribute that I was referring to. And then each selector then gets accordingly like that attribute selector. But we want modules to keep really keep our styles confined to our individual component. And so the way we're going to do this then is we're simply going to vbind the class and then we're going to access our dollar style. And then since this is a dash name, we need to actually wrap it inside of the square brackets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now like as such. And then when we save, you'll see now that we have our tab nav item with its unique hash, um, but nothing showing up yet. And this makes sense. Uh, and the reason for that is because inside of here, you'll notice that we still have actually quite a, a few dependencies as far as making everything look correct. So we're going to go ahead and continue on with this. So we have our vbind class here where we're going to go ahead and style and let's go ahead and wrap this as well with the square brackets. And then, oh, I had it earlier wrapped totally. So there we go. And once we say, you'll see now that it's looking much better already. Now, in case you are finding that the syntax is a little bit weird, um, when we're using the CSS convention, you can certainly switch it over to use camel case for the uh, CSS class so that uh, basically you don't have to use a square bracket notation. That's sort of up to your team. I just try to stick with CSS convention since we are writing CSS and the JavaScript is there to enhance the CSS, not necessarily to change everything. So um, I'm going to leave it as is, but just know that theoretically you could, you know, turn this over into like dot tab tab nav item. And then you would have to switch all the classes name, but simply inside of your CSS, it would have to then correspond accordingly. But so just know that that is an option uh, if your team should choose. There's nothing wrong uh, doing it that way. It's just uh, really more of a stylistic preference for your team or for yourself. And so while everything looks pretty good, we're still missing the fact that there's no active state, right? We can't tell which tab that the user is on. So the way we need to do this is we need to integrate back in that piece regarding the is active. Except you'll notice that immediately, basically VS Code is telling us something's wrong. And the problem is that we have a duplicate class that's being vbound. And by duplicate, I mean duplicate attribute. And so the question is, how do we fuse this together? And so um, there's one of two ways of doing this. Uh, but I think the easiest way for us to do this is to actually have a computed property that then determines the appropriate styles. So in order to do this, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and just remove this for now. And let's go back into our setup function. And so inside of here, what we need to do is we want a computed property based on whether or not the is, is active prop is being passed down. And if that's true, then we'll return the is active state, otherwise return a normal CSS. And so, you know, if we were to start by doing this, we'd probably go ahead and start by importing the computed property. Uh, from view, and that's the first place we'd start. And so in here, we might say something like const. Um, in this case, we're just going to call it tab nav item class names, right? This is kind of long, but let's be super explicit here, where it's a computed property that takes in a callback function. And so what do we want it to return? Well, let's just say that um, basically if props dot is active is true, right? Then theoretically, we're going to want to return this style object, right? Uh, with a uh, tab nav item. And we also want to return this like style block with the is active. It's really what we want. 
But the problem with this though, right? Let's go ahead and just save this is that style doesn't exist. This is not ever going to work because right now, uh, dollar symbol style, uh, simply like there's nothing within the context that would indicate what this is. And so the way to show you this doesn't work is let's go ahead and tab nav item class names and let's go ahead and just, uh, bind this directly tab nav item class names, just like that. And so one, oops, something's broken, but let's go ahead and just start by saying, uh, if this works, we should at least see something. So here, does anything? Nothing, right? And so again, the reason for this is dollar symbol style doesn't exist. So how do we access our CSS modules inside of our composition API? Well, the helper method we need for this is going to be called use CSS modules. And so what this is going to allow us to do is inside of here, we can actually then sort of declare our own uh, style const. So in this case, right, it'll be const style equals use CSS module. And so this is a function that we call. And so to show you what you get here, if I log, go ahead and console log style, right? Uh, let's go ahead and let me just return a empty string for now so that it doesn't break on us. So let's go ahead and refresh. You'll see here that we have a style object that actually contains the corresponding class names for everything. So you see tab button, you know, so it looks like here. Um, oh, interesting. Looks like we have some mappings as far as the kebab case to camel, uh, not camel, kebab case to, no, camel case. I was right. <laughs> um, so this is interesting. This is good that we have some basically automatic conversions. This is, uh, yeah, something I didn't know until now. And so now that we have this, really what we want to say is, okay, so in this case, now that we have the style, what we can say is if it is active, then we're going to return style.tabnav item. And then we're also going to return, so we're actually going to return an array. So this is using the array syntax for defining multiple classes. And then we want the is active class here to be populated. And you can see it just works. And then vice versa, and then otherwise by default, we will just return style.tabnav item. And so here now we can see everything looks good. Um, if you go and click, everything's shifting over. And look at that, it works. Um, so with that, we've gone ahead and refactored our class to actually utilize computer properties. Uh, along with the UCSS module helper method that allows us to access our CSS modules inside of the composition API. And so now that I know this little piece where um, Vue has actually gone another the extra distance as far as converting it from one to the other, we can actually then go ahead and say, let's just switch this over to tab nav item button. And so we save that, everything still looks good. Now we don't have to deal with that square bracket and uh, everything just works. So let's go ahead and commit this code and then we should be good to go. The next time you need to style components inside of your view app, I hope you'll give CSS modules a try. And in the meantime, if you have any requests or suggestions as far as other features you'd like to see me cover regarding Vue 3, be sure to comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.